Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now in Washington is Ambassador C. Boyd and Gray. Ambassador Gray was White House counsel during the George H.W. Bush administration. He also served as the special envoy for European affairs and served as U.S. ambassador to the European Union during the George W. Bush administration. And Mr. Ambassador, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. House Oversight Committee Chairman Daryl Issa is looking for even more whistleblowers after yesterday's dramatic hearings over the Benghazi attack, which killed four Americans. Do Republicans yet have the bombshell that demonstrates an internal response to Benghazi amounted to a cover-up? I think there's enough there. Uh, you could say the, the, the White House was lucky that um, two criminal uh, two criminal uh, developments took place yesterday which drowned out the news. I was watching, uh, when I was on the treadmill, watching the 5 o'clock uh, CNN news, which was dominated by a press conference uh, uh, from New Jersey or wherever, and no coverage at all of these hearings. So uh, the public isn't seeing uh, really the, as much as they should be seeing because the hearings were quite riveting. Chairman Issa says that he believes a cover-up was committed at the highest level of government. Is there anything more that the chairman needs to do to connect the dots and prove that's the case, or has it already been proven? Well, I think the case is, is actually proven. Uh, we know for sure that the talking points were altered, uh, and uh, that, I think, is now uh, uh, pretty well established. The question is, is the public going to... Uh, understand what happened. Now, this re all reminds me of Iran Contra, which, which, uh, which is much well, was, was much less dangerous than this. Mm -hmm. No one died in Iran Contra, and ultimately we won by getting rid of the Soviet Union and Russia out of uh, Central America. So it was a victory. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, this was a disaster in terms of uh, uh, arms leaking into Mali and now into Syria. Uh, the, the whole thing, in addition to the to the four very unfortunate deaths, including the ambassador. It, it was a, a, a military and diplomatic and political disaster. So I think the, the facts are all there. The question is, can the American public be uh, brought up to date? Governor Mike Huckabee believes the Benghazi hearings could lead to the impeachment of President Obama or at least lead to his removal from office. Is this a plausible scenario? Oh, gosh, I don't know whether I would go that far, but the th but the issue that seems to me to be missed, and it's the 800 gorilla and the proverbial gorilla in the room, so to speak, which is this wasn't some ordinary, although very dangerous, uh, mission in some faraway country. This was a war zone. We started a war there. We were at war with, uh, with Libya. And uh, not to have any uh, weapons within, uh, 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 you know, 15 hours of... Uh, of transport is is just unbelievable. Uh, you might uh, uh, accept Panetta's uh, description. Well, this isn't 911 situation. You just can't dial 911 and expect someone to show up. Well, in an ordinary mission, maybe not. But this wasn't an ordinary mission. This was a war zone. It wasn't a, a, tr a, a drug bust. And the excuse for not uh, putting the proper information in the first talking points for Ambassador Rice when she went on television, the excuse is is that to do so would have interfered with the prosecution. Well, this isn't a drug bust. This isn't a crime scene. There's no prosecution. We're trying to find out what happened, save lives, and contain the damage of the fallout of this mess uh, in, uh, in Libya. What about criminal charges, though? Could they be filed against anyone over alleged lies about the talking points? Well, the criminal, <laughs> the criminal defense that the White House is using has to do with prosecutions in Libya. We're not prosecuting anybody in Libya. Could, could there be prosecutions of, uh, uh, of, of lies uh, in this case? Well, if there's lying to Congress, yes. Um, I'm not sure that altering the talking points for a public appearance on television uh, is prosecutable mm -hmm. uh, per se, but it certainly is politically uh, very disturbing. Mr. Ambassador, can you give us some insight into the office of the White House counsel? What, if any, legal guidance is likely being given to White House officials right now, to President Obama? Well, I think the legal advice they're giving is to be as uh, little forthcoming as possible, to say nothing, uh, to try to avoid having to appear publicly, to, 
to discourage um, within, within limits, uh, obviously, uh, anybody from talking who uh, shouldn't be talking. Um, uh, but I would be careful if I were White House counsel uh, on going too far. If they really did demote, which apparently they did, the DCM, the number two, who was acting ambassador after uh, Ambassador Stevens was killed, if they really did demote him because he was trying to get the truth out, that is very, very damaging. And I think that was established in yesterday's hearings. Uh, again, I repeat, it's just important for the American public to understand um, how bad this was that we can't let our foreign policy be run by talking points. More than 130 Republicans are calling for a select committee to investigate Benghazi further. Do we need a select committee to review Benghazi? I think so. Um, there's enough compartmentalization or stovepiping or turf uh, difficulties between the various committees who share jurisdiction. You have intelligence, you have foreign affairs, you have armed services, and then you have this oversight committee. Uh, each one has uh, certain limitations as to how far they can go and where they can go and the competency of their own staffs to investigate. Whereas if you had a joint committee made up of the elements of all of those committees I just mentioned, I think you would have uh, a much more powerful investigative tool. It would be uh, much the same as what happened in Iran-Contra, which uh, from the point of view of the defendant, of the Democrats was a, you know, a huge success, even though, as I say, at the end of the day, no one was ever charged, let alone uh, convicted of any, of any uh, crime involving uh, either Iran or the Contras. Last question. As a former U.S. ambassador yourself, what concerns do you have about the safety of our diplomats abroad, especially in the Middle East in the wake of Benghazi? Well, I, I wouldn't want to serve there, that's for sure. Uh, if, this is, if this is what the, uh, what the protection level is going to be and the response level. I really think I'm more worried about the response level. Uh, if you, uh, you really have a right, I think, to expect that people will come to your rescue, especially if you are in a war zone. Uh, that's the tradition. That's what makes the Marine Corps the Marine Corps that it is, the greatest fighting force on earth, is because they take care of their people when they get in trouble. And this was an abandonment of, uh, uh, of our uh, public servants in trouble. And that's a terrible signal to send uh, for future um, diplomats and uh, future soldiers. All right, Ambassador C. Boyd and Gray, thanks so much for being with us today. My pleasure. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.